All right, this is generic graphics uh, week three exercises. Uh, so uh, in the first part of the the exercise, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, see a little bit of like orthographic projections. So that means orthographic projection means a two dimensional representation of three dimensional objects. So for instance, if you look at this object. Um, then you can represent it in two-dimensional work, okay? But in, when you're representing three-dimensional object in two-dimensional two work, then there are uh, three views that you need. Um, then the first one is you choose your front, your front view. Uh, so probably you can use this as your front view. If you choose that as your front view, then this is going to be your uh, this one is going to be um, your your right view, your top view, this side, okay? And then, uh, of course, this side is going to be uh, is going to be your, um, your right hand side view. This one, okay? So once you do that, but what is what is, is there any rule like to choose your your front view or something like that? It's a very common practice to choose the most intricate. Or the most complex part of the the, the the object as your as your front view. So then, what are the rules? I mean, there are so many rules that you you know associated with like how to represent them and so on and so forth. But I'm going to keep it just simple because this is like more or less. It's not more about like the orthographic projection, but rather it's like how we can represent this drawing in in, in AutoCAD. Um, so. Basically, like uh, as we said, what you need to do is like you need to uh, choose your front view. So that means if this area is your front view, then the front first thing that you need to do is you need to draw a front view. Okay, so for instance, like uh, in this case, so if this is your front view, the shaded area. Okay, so therefore, first you need to represent that. Uh, in this particular example, what what we're going to do is like we're going to count the number of the number of squares. You know, when you translate this to I mean I mean the views, the orthogonal views into AutoCAD, I just want you to 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 count the number of squares or grids on on AutoCAD instead of doing um, you know, uh, units and whatnot. So therefore, uh, if you count here, like for instance, you have one. Uh, you have one square here, you have two, three, and then four, and then five, and then six, right? So therefore, um, let's, let's see, let's start from here, and then like, you know, six to this. So you can one, two, three, four, five. I can add one more, uh, and that will be six right horizontal solid line and then vertically you know you counted like how many squares this thing is crossing uh, probably I would go with uh, with three right so therefore I'm going to count three it means start here and then bring it here okay um, and then you can use the line command if you want to and then in this direction you only come one that means uh, you start from here to here you draw one okay and then how many how many do you go down here like for instance you come down two that means you draw two like that and in this direction you know you go down and then you know three like that and then you repeat the line and then let's see because you have to go two like this you see this two at this corner and then you repeat that by um, doing like this I think the pin function is better uh, and then of course you draw the remaining part of the drawing uh, something like this okay then then this is uh, this is the top part. So if you look at this drawing from the top, you will see this. You will see this part. Okay, I'm using a different pattern. Okay, 
and then of course you will see this okay so one rule of thumb is like when you when you draw your top view your top view must be right on top right on top of the the front view okay so therefore you know and then when you when you have every corner like for instance if you see a corner here on the front view once you for once you have your, the front view like the front view you can use the front view as a guide for your for your other views like why because you know you know, see this right and dotted line this is a corner so there has to be like some kind of a corner or edge that corresponds with this corner okay as a result like and then for instance in the horizontal you have four so therefore you have to go four like that right the top view when you see this side it occupies four squares right so same thing on the other side there are the same four and of course from this side you go one right you go one edge and then from that edge you know you go straight down right the whole way because you know you look at this line which is very continuous and you know you know it's a little tricky to draw those things so like that um okay yeah mm -hmm. um same is true here right it goes straight line and then draw that one which is at the distance of two why two why did i come to two because um, you can see here see one two it's just the hr2 um, so yeah nice okay and then on top of that like what is on the right hand side view this is what you have as a right side yeah right hand side because you know if this is your front that means if you f stand here and look at the object if you're eyesighted in this direction right and automatically your right hand will be on this side right so therefore as i tried to mention it earlier you know like if if you see every corner and then if you extend that corner like that right if you extend that corner like that right and i see this corner also there's a corner here if you extend those corners just those dotted lines are like you can consider them as your construction lines then there has to be something correspondent with that okay so therefore if you look at this object you see this rectangle right in front of you okay so you know i, I can shed it with some um, like this you see this the one that i'm shedding right and that's what your right hand side view is this I'm using different patterns of shading so that you can clearly see them. see this one All right so if you count like one many squares do you have one two three four so therefore I'm going to start from here and then I'll draw four squares one two three four then how much height will you go you can also refer like the, the, the front view uh, or you can count them the same as like as your front view, which is three. You do the same thing on this side. And on this side. Okay. Then that's a rectangle, so you complete a rectangle. A little overboard, you know. Um, then you may say, like, what is what is a corresponding element for this line? That is, did this this groove this cut? 
edge right that came out that's what it is so this corner but the thing is it's not straight in your line of sight if it's not straight in your line of sight then how do you represent something that is hidden is represented in engineering by a broken line all right that's it okay so this is the front view this is the top view you know you don't have to write those letters because in orthogonal projection according to the american society of mechanical engineers uh, those views are known like if you put them like this so this is your front view this is your top view and then this is your of course right hand side right hand side okay that's it and three views are enough to represent uh, the objects like everything so because like you know there is a bottom view there is uh, a, like a rare view there's a left hand side view everything but the question is uh, but the question is like how many of those uh, views do you really do you really want uh, so therefore what you need is just only three of them just three of them now um, let's see one more example so let's go ahead and then see um, an example for this one we're going to do the same thing uh, this one or probably a more complicated one maybe this one uh, the rest the one that we saw pretty much they're similar to each other this one because it involves arc and things like that then you know so again I'm going to choose this as my as my front view then this is going to be my right hand side view okay then this is going to be my top view now the way i did it in the previous example what i'm going to do is first i'll draw the front side so if you have a curved edge this curved edge when you see it from here from the front view again i prefer to do the front view first you see those curved edges the way it's going to happen is like, for instance, if someone asks you to draw the side view of a cylinder, it's going to be a rectangle, that's it, right? You don't see, you know, the curvature, na the curvature nature. So the same thing applies here. So therefore, this curved part, what's going to happen is like it's going to be considered or represented by a straight line, okay? Um, likewise, from the top, this side, when, I mean, on this side, when you see it from the front in this direction the only thing that you will see is this guy which is literally uh literally a, like a line so you don't see the, the the curved nature right so if this is like the very top far part okay if this is like the very top part of the drawing then i'm going to shade it like this like to see the front view so this is what the front view will look like okay approximately you will be able to see up to this side so that means you represent one line here another line there and then the rest is some kind of l-shaped kind of object right so count the number of squares one two three four um five six seven in total like you have seven lines that you're going you would want to come um, so I'm going to start from here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the vertical direction, it's only one, so therefore I'm going to get one. So from here, I'm going to come five, right? One, two, three, four, five of the distances. So five means approximately I'm going to count five distances like that. Okay. And to the vertical, how much will you want to go? It's 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 only um three, right? It's like one and then two over here, probably another one, then three in total. I mean of course in addition to whatever I have. So three, I'm going to go three one two three means 
the way like that and then going to come here like that and come on yeah whenever you have a line or something there that's what happens okay so this is how you represent it the only thing is yeah, maybe how am I going to represent the arc and the holes and things like that? You see this hole, this hole, it's there. And, uh, this hole, it is there, but you can only see it from the top. You don't see it in the front. But it, but but does it mean like the object is not there? It is there. So then you will need to have um, some kind of uh, so one away from there then you need to have a representation of like broken lines here um, right here okay and then you came here across at the distance of one two three grids and then you represent that also broken lines like that something like that okay so um how would I know that is um, what do you call a curve? So, you know, you represent a center line there just to show there is a curve for the bigger guy. <coughs> you can do the same thing here. Uh, you know, first there's a hole there. Okay, and represent the hole inside by dotted lines like that. Okay, this line normally represents this guy, this guy, this guy. When you see it from this side, now you do the same thing from for the top part. Okay, like that. Now, of course, there's there's a curvature in there. Then you know, may probably add a center line. Um, so this is how you will do the. Um, the front view and now you can go out and then do the top view but when you see this thing from the top view pretty much what you are going to see is um, a big um, kind of um, rectangle why because you will see you will see this as a line this this edge you'll see this as a line as well and pretty much well you will see this as a curve to see definitely see the sound the curve and the holes see the mass curves um so the way you're going to proceed is like again you can have a few broken lines just to see some of the extensions so some more or less like construction lines they they're not really part of uh, the you know the drawing but they guide you where to start where to stop and so on and so forth okay um so uh Probably if you want, you can start from the rectangle one, two, three, four, right? So you should go one, two, three, four, uh, match lines, right? So why do I choose four? When you see this object from the top, from this arrow, that means if your eyes are looking down on the object, you see one, two, three, four, that the, the object has four dimensions or four scales of width okay you will then you will see this edge collapsing on this straight line then it is represented by straight line same thing this curve is going to be collapsed on that one and then it will show up as a straight line nothing else um, then of course this corner is going to be a straight line as well um, Okay, these are straight lines. Oh, come. Like that. Okay, and then of course you can proceed with this line up to to probably the center, to the center, um, to the center of this curve. So the center of the curve is going to we're going to use it. For the curve so this is the center of the curve that we see for the bigger for the bigger curve okay 
but until you reach to that spot what you can do is you can draw a line it goes straight like that and straight that goes like that so bear with me i'm going to draw this like with my free hand so um, then i'm going to come from from here and curved okay so in general like the curve is going to go something like that you know you know in, in, in autocad you will be using a proper arc or circle function to draw so it's going to work fine so likewise the interior arc is going to make something like Okay, and then again the interior circle. I mean the smaller one is going to look like this. I'm drawing this um, this inner part of the drawing. Then the rest is going to be like draw a line and connect them just to complete the thing. Okay. Ah. Okay. So nice. And how about this rectangle? It's there, but you don't see it, right? So one distance away, one distance away from it, and then you represent it by by a set of broken lines. Like that. And see, like that. Right? Isn't it great? Then now what you need to do is you need to draw the right hand side view. When you do the right hand side view, this curve is not going to show up, but this you can literally see that curve. Right? Then again you can use the front the front the front view as your guides where to start and where to finish your drawing. So you see now your drawing has to be within this so in this direction in the horizontal how much will you go then you'll go one two three four right? so this part of the drawing is going to show as a straight line nothing else as a straight line so therefore um one two three four uh, you know like that straight line okay then you go with the line thickness i mean this part of the drawing is like one thick so you go one thick like that like that and then all right like that okay once you do that you know the curvature starts like at this location which is one above right so therefore you just do one above like that like that and then the rest you finish it with with a curve that passes through this point right like that and this one also starts like that there you go and then you see this hole that i represented with a dotted line that is this this hole when you see it from the front side you will fully fully see that right so therefore you need to represent that by something like that okay so that's it so but always that you need to keep in mind is like once you have the front view the right hand side view must be right on top of it likewise the right hand side view i mean the top view has to be right on top of the, the front view and then this guy which is the right hand side view must be right on the right hand side of the front view don't put any lower or above like you know just you see the heights they match the height of the right hand side view and the front view match the width of the the right hand side view matches with the width of the top view so you you need to keep those arrangements like you cannot have 
the right hand side view at a random location and the, the, the top view at any random location and so on and so forth they have too much you know somehow like when you when you represent three-dimensional objects like in a two-dimensional drawing they are complicated so therefore just always you need to keep like those arrangements as much as possible okay having said that like then you know there are other drawings then you know um, but for now what we are going to do is let's try to go out and then translate those two views to AutoCAD so uh, the way we are going to proceed is like you know you open your AutoCAD um, and then as much as possible zoom in okay uh, then I'm going to draw the front view first so what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the number of grids that I have here see I don't know if it's visible if I click on here the grid lines are off if I click here on off on off so make sure that like you are at the most zoomed in grid level okay that means if I zoom in beyond here I don't see any grid lines so you stop there okay so make sure that you are at that level uh, then what you will do is then let's draw the front view the front view is like it's a rectangle pretty much uh, one two three four five six six by three rectangle okay so i just follow that and use the line command um if i want i'm going to turn on the snap mode and you will see what the snap mode will do for me because i'm going to match the grid points if i turn on the the snap mode what it will do is like the cursor is going to snap on the grid points okay so therefore for now i'm going to turn it off i believe it's gonna get um, my job a little easier then you see you see how it snaps it snaps like right at the grid points so therefore it will help me make my drawings a little faster you will see this because it counts the grids for me one one grid two grid three grid four grid five grid six grid stop one grid two grid three grid stop stop six grid again voila that's it okay and and then if i if i want i can go ahead and then snap objects but otherwise um then I'll, i can go ahead and then you know start my line uh, from from this so for now if i turn on object snap so that the line is not going to uh, snap on on the corners just for momentarily um, then i'm going to go ahead and turn off the object snap option then i'm drawing my line to here and there and there if there is any any trim i'll start the trim command and i'll select those two lines as my cutting edge and then get rid of this like that uh, i'm done with the front view then the top view it has to be done right on top of the front view okay then it's also a rectangle by you know you can see this it's four rectangles by six um it's four squares by uh, six grids right so therefore going to go ahead and start the line command again you can start the line command in any way you want uh, one two three grids four grid five grid six grid it has to be right on top of it. you have it has to be my drawing has to be right on top of this guy so i'll go four grids in this direction go like that that's that that's it and then i need to find a line that corresponds with this corner start the command start from here that's it start the line command something that corresponds with this corner start here right there pressing that's it and then i can go ahead and then do which one the side view this side view as you can see the side view is it is four by three in terms of height it matches with this guy right so therefore start the line command three down four to the side right it is four isn't it 
No, four. Two, four. Snap, snap. That's it. Then I need to find something that corresponds with this, but that has to be represented by what kind of line? It has to be a broken line. Okay, you you can change like you know the line property and things like that. There are ways to do that. Uh, but now, for now, what you will do is just draw it with um, a regular line if you want to, and then you can change the, the line property somewhere. Uh, let's see, uh, you know, you have options and uh, with the hidden line and, and the other kind of lines that you may probably uh, want to change the line property. Or if you want, we're going to come to that later, like with the um, uh, with something we call it like um, type of line or line type and you can incorporate that in um, in the function in the layer property function um, and so on and so forth um, for now like you know um, it's fine like line type <coughs> if you type lt you can have like a line type property for instance if you want you can have a line type the one that you have is here um, you know it says by layer it's fine you can choose by layer or by block what type of line that you have is like only those ones so if you don't see broken line you can add broken line by clicking here and you know you add a dash line and then you make that dash line as your current line by double clicking on it and then say save and then you go ahead and then like you know for instance you can draw your line and your line should be um, like dotted line uh, okay so if it doesn't show um, your line is not really the way you want it right click on it and then click on properties and their properties you can see that like this line is it's a broken line but what you can do is like you need to change the line scale to a smaller value so that it can be visible okay so in this particular case 0 0.025 will give me something proper that can show okay see that's it um so this is how you complete the first part um then second one uh, i would like to help you once again you do the same thing you're going to start like you know by drawing uh, this guy, which is pretty much one, two, three, five, six, seven, you know, seven by uh, one, and then up there it goes four. So uh, once again, you know, this is one part of the drawing, so you're done with it. So just just zoom in somewhere around here, and you can you can populate them later together if you want. Start the line command. Platform here, count seven this is seven click one and then you go in this direction i think probably this much and then this direction you go uh i think it's three more and there okay so then see the front view is done and of course there are broken lines i'm going to come back to the broken lines later um, then it does the same thing here and there okay so what the way we are going to proceed is like now the top view the top view how many do you have one one two three four you know this side is four this side is of course up to the end it is five i mean seven so um draw four so i'm going to zoom in a little and then start the line command one two three four that's it Two in this direction come here like that okay so that's like this part of the, the, the drawing and then you have to come up to here for about like uh, three more and then and then the arc okay so the arc is going to be up to you how to draw it but I'm going to show you using maybe the circle uh, circle part um, so this is as my construction line I'll keep it for now because I'm going to draw a circle which is with the center and of course its radius is going to be uh, like that 
two grid points okay then press enter and you know you use the trim function uh, select this guy and you select this guy you press enter and uh, trim that guy uh, then there's a hole that is visible on the top view uh, so this is what the hole looks like right so what you can do is you can draw or use a circle command if you wish uh, then you can do it with the circle command circle here the radius is one grid again circle center over here uh, center over here with a radius equal to one one grid point right and then there you draw your line line starts from here and it is there and again a line command starts here and is there and you use the trim command to select this corner and that corner as your edge and then trim that side there you have it okay your top view your top view is done oh but yeah we need to include a broken line for from for the top view okay let's not forget that I mean for the front view because you see this line corresponds to here um, again has to be a broken line like that you remember how I changed the broken line you can do the following if you want to you, know, you select those two together I may have another one of course um, you see this hole from the right hand side view it's also available there on, on the on the front view so therefore I'm going to go ahead and then include it uh, and you see probably yep um, so there's a line like that there's a line like that too okay so this line this line this line and this line are broken lines so you know right click go to properties and then you know it's already using broken line it was drawn using broken line option and change the number so that you can see it which is a smaller one then you know you can see that if I do a little smaller probably I might get the better kind of broken lines which is really greatly done that's it and then you can go ahead and then do the right hand side view you know the right hand side view the width is one two three four and then you go one up and then of course you know the circle or the arc part continues um, so line command four uh, how many do i go up i said if i look at it here i need to go up two and then after that the arc um, two like that this is the center line I know that um, but there is a real red line like that and you can use the circle command uh, with two units uh, and then if you use the trim command uh, to trim the circle okay and then of course this line isn't there um, okay so this line is not there uh, but there is a hole that corresponds with this from view and they are going to be uh, visible definitely they are visible so therefore um, there I have yeah. so here what you need to know is like how to change the line type number one number two how to turn on the snap so that like the line can snap on the grid points and then you can draw you're drawing faster okay so with uh, so this is pretty much the, the first part of the exercise um, then you will do for the rest there are about seven drawings that you are going to do um, um, then this one uh, probably might not 
you might struggle to understand what the statement is saying and blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to help you like start a new drawing. You don't need to start a new drawing. You can put all the drawings in one same drawing if you want to. Draw a metal chimney cap which extends 12 um, inches above, um, four feet wide you know, wood chimney uh, chase. So this is what the four feet is. Okay, this is four feet. So keep in mind, this is feet. This is not inches. If your dimensions are in inches, so therefore you will have to multiply this four by twelve. This is equivalent to forty-eight inches. Okay, so keep that in mind. Then I'll have an exaggerated drawing of this. Um, so I'm going to have a little exaggerated like this. So that yeah, you can see the dimensions very clearly. Okay. Now, uh, now not the dimensions if you if you read the dimensions properly um, it says trim just with three white trim okay so um, the white trims are from here to here this is what the white trim is which is three inches okay the white trim is this Okay, that little gap is what the, the, the three inch wide this one. See, this. you can use the whole thing around at three inches, uh, and then it says. The siding, the siding means this. So this is what the six inches. Six inch. Okay. Uh, so this is six. Next one is six. This is six, and so on and so forth. You can count how many of them you, you will want to do. Um, and then it says the main portion of the cap is twelve by. The first one it says 14. The 14 inch is this. The very top part of the chimney is 14 inches by one. You may say like, what is one? Where is one? This little very tiny top is like what? The one inches, okay? This little dimension. That means this, this little part is what the one inches and then it says like the main portion is 12 by 7 so where does the 12 count this is what the 12 is this is what the 12 inches okay inch inch okay that's fine by 7 where is the 7 the 7 is from here to here okay that is what the seven inch okay that's the, the sun inch symbol um, and then it says like 10 by 4 um, the 10 is here this is the 10 part and then 4 is this and then and then the lower part is of course you know right away you have the chase okay so yeah I don't mind how you're going to do it uh, but I can show you like how you can do those things like a little faster and things like that uh, because um, you know I uh, the reason is it because it can be done faster if you have a little experience uh, so uh, this is how I proceed if I set my units to architecture look what I'm going to do if I set my units as architecture like that right so I can insert distances like this 
it says the chimney is what dimension it says four feet so that means it can type four and put a symbol of inch i mean feet like that see boom i have it ready like that so i have this line of course i'm going to change this line to solid line okay so that's my four feet width um, width line for to start with then once i have this i'm going to array this in the vertical direction nine times one or ten times it doesn't matter why count this one two three four five six seven eight nine approximately ten now i'll go with like ten times then i'm going to use the offset command and then i offset it by six six what inches double quotation then go one two three exhausting you know what i'm going to do i am going to use a new magical kind of command known as array i'm going to select my object press enter and i'm going to use a rectangular array AutoCAD will do it for me but the only thing is like if i click here what should be the distance if i click here this blue square thingy it starts to change its color to red look and then after that i can return of the object snap my object snap is on it so it's giving me a hard time see then i can decide what distance i am going between so the spacing is six inches i'm going to decide six inches see? and then i can decide the numbers i already did three then i need seven more then type seven that's it but forget this one i don't need this part so over here i'm going to collapse it to just only one column see No, I don't need four columns. I decided one column. There I have. Then I'll go ahead and then draw my line. We'll turn my object snap on. And there I have my line here. Do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to definitely edit that. Right? So the line types are continuous. I mean, we haven't discussed about layers yet, but it would have been easier if we used layers here. Uh, once you do that, then you know what? Offset by three. What do we need to offset this guy? What else do we need to offset this guy? Oh, unfortunately, I cannot offset this because it's a product of array. See? If you create an, an object using the array command, AutoCAD assumes that's one solid object. See, it assumes like all of those lines are product of one. You know what I'm going to do? I can explode it. I can disband it. I can ungroup it using the explode function. If you type X or if you type fully explode and press enter, then it's going to explode it for you. Then again, now offset the edge by distance of three again. There I have, and the rest is what? A magic one, trim, select your edges, this guy, that guy, this guy, and that guy. Then what do I do next? And then I can go ahead and then and trim this, look. Do I do the same thing on the other side. There you go. Right? 
we can do the same thing for the other one. Use those two and then trim anything in between. Nicely trimmed. There I have. And on top of this, if you want, you can go ahead and then like you know, put your chimney work. I, I think this is the most difficult part of it. The rest is like as as I already gave you the dimension. You know, this is a rectangle by for 14 by one, something like that. This one is 12 by seven. You can do even rectangles and then then you know patch them together. Um, so you can draw a line, which is um, for for. 14 by by 1 okay and then you can go ahead and then draw the other rectangle which is 12 by 7 okay. this is 12 by 7 then you draw line 12 down 7 in this direction 12 and of course I can close it and then once I have that you know right handle I can move this guy by holding it here and snap it right at the middle of it okay. um, and then the other middle part is you know the lower part is uh, 4 by 10 then you can do the same thing like line here um, 10 down Four, ten, and then, and then you use uh, the move command uh, to snap it here. Okay. Then, if you want, everything else um, can be snapped to the middle of this. Yeah, I mean, this is the faster way, and then the rest is just you know you can. You can trim and you can you can make a filler here, a chamfer there, and so on and so forth. If there's any repeated line, you can delete them. But pretty much the procedure is this. This is the fastest way to do. Um, so and then in addition to that, like as an exercise, um, please make sure that you do this drawing just using you know offset and. Um, and you draw a rectangle by 1.25 by um, by 1.5 and then after that like uh, use the different commands like the chamfer command and, and so on and so forth uh, there's a faster way to do it if you want to I, you know um, I can also show you like how to do it especially how to use the chamfer command because we haven't seen a chamfer command in any of them uh, I'll show you probably part of it 1.25 by 1.5 1.5 you can do a rectangle uh, like that I'll put all my drawings in one same drawing so uh, line start in this direction it is 1.5 whereas in this direction it is uh, 1.25 uh, in this direction it is 1.5 and then of course I'm going to bring in close this um, after that what you can do is um, we can do is like you know offset offset this side by let's say by 0.3 and then offset this side by 0.5 so off, offset offset by 0.3 which side this side um, and then offset again but this time it's by 0.5 which one this guy um, and then the lower lower side this has to be offset by 0.2 so how do you do it you use the same thing offset command but specify the distance as 0.2 this guy and which one there i have okay then you know if you go ahead and then clear most of your work uh, what you can do is um, you can use the term command and trim the interior parts and usually select everything and then get rid of the parts that I don't want uh, get rid of the parts that I don't want get rid of the parts that I don't need get rid of the parts that I don't need and after that um, there is there is this part if you see here it's 0 0.25 
right? And this is 0 0.125. This, like making the edge something like this, is called chamfering. So you can use a chamfer command. Um, so chamfer command 0.25 by 1.25. So let me show you. Start the chamfer command by typing ch c h a, or there's a there's there's a you know a chamfering option that you can you can follow like the toolbar you can use the toolbar otherwise so type ch c h a chamfer it's asking me right now to select my first line I don't want to select my first line I want to put in distance so you see d so therefore I'll type a D, D for distance option. Then I'm going to tell our cat I want 0.25 in one side, I want 0.25 on the other side. Then we'll come and select those two lines or cut chamfer it for me. Then press enter or type chamfer. Yeah. Since I'm going to use the same dimension, I don't need to give distance once again. AutoCAD remembers what I did in the previous one. But in the next one, I need to start the chamfer command again, type distance again, because I'm changing the distance from 0.25 to 0.125 in the X, 0.125 in the Y. That is for one, for this part and that part. You do the same thing. Now you don't need to put in this, the distances because dimensions are given. There I have. So um, if you want, you know, go ahead and complete it. It's not really um, that much of a work or it's not that difficult. You can also chamfer this side uh, based on the dimension that are given. Um, the given dimensions are 0.25 once again on this side. Okay, 0.25 and you know, chamfer distance 0.25. <clears throat> Again, 0.25 to the other side. Then there I have. There I have. See, um, I'm very, very close to completion. Except that I need to bring this guy by a distance of what? Say 0.375. You can offset the line if you want to. Um, so offset um, by 0 0.325 but what the distance is 375 rather 0 0.375 offset one well, this line do the same thing offset this line it's okay it's longer but I can extend it. It's okay. Castration. And the rest is what? Again? Chum. <clears throat> this part isn't part of it. This one. Um, to be careful here. Um, this, um, okay. Then maybe I will use this this edge. Um, to, that's it. See, nicely done still using the chamfer command okay so that's pretty much it until the next session see you